trying to get this situated a few minutes ago and I think I hit the wrong button. So if you have a really short like one second video, that would be me hitting the wrong button. So I want to show you my hat. What do you think? What do you think about that? You think my hat's pretty cool? I got this from the Bold Movement from my daughter who Megan Rawlings is the CEO. And I was really super excited to get to share. Tanya Stevens is on. Hey, Tanya. How are you? It is so great to see you're supporting us. I really appreciate that more than you know. So I wanted to mention to those of you who may have forgotten, you have about um, five hours to get something for Mother's Day. I think it's like four and a half hours. And it's going to be the next day for Mother's Day. If you are fortunate enough to have your mother with you, don't forget to give her a really quick thank you. Um, I love you. Thanks for what you do for us. Because it is um, be the first year that I haven't had my mother on Mother's Day. And it's a little hard because you go to the store or something and you see things and you're like, oh, mom, with a... Mm. You forget about that. So for all you kiddos who are out there who might be watching this with your mom, give her a big hug and tell her you love her and tell her how much you appreciate what she's done for you. So I want to say yesterday our story, Carter helped me read yesterday and she's not with me today. So I'm sorry about that. But we had a story about a man who was a little bit older and he was, if you remember, he, he was uh, 99 years old. And he was going to be a dad. Oh my goodness. And then, do you remember his name? I'll give you a hint. His wife's name was Sarah. And she was how old? Does anybody remember? Carter pointed it out for us. She was 90 years old. So we're talking about people who are older, I am not that old yet, but people who are a lot older than me having babies because God kept his promise. He said he would give them a child and he promised this gentleman, do you remember his name? Uh oh, sorry. That he would have more kids and grandkids and great grandkids than there were stars. So when God keeps his, when he makes a promise to us, he keeps his word. And we have to trust sometimes that it might be hard or maybe we don't understand. But when God says this is what he's going to do and he gives us that commitment, he's going to keep that word. So I want you to know that tonight we're going to read, it's called A Voice from Heaven. And this story is kind of important because it's got so many different things going on. But a couple nights ago we read about a gentleman who was baptizing. His name was... John the Baptist, and it was actually Jesus' cousin, John. So we're going to talk about a voice from heaven. And I'm going to show you the picture right here. Can you see it? And it goes on a little bit. So this will be just kind of a, an overview of where Jesus' ministry started. Because Jesus was born a baby to Mary and Joseph, but he didn't remain a baby. He had to grow up, just like we grew up. But he had to work, too. So what did he do when he worked? Well, he told people about salvation and about what he was going to do with his ministry and that if you would believe in him, that he didn't say it would be easy. He just said that if you believe in him, he is there with us. So if you haven't had the opportunity to ask Jesus to come into your heart, I would love to help you with that. Let's go ahead and start reading. This title is called A Voice from Heaven. That whispered word spread like wildfire. The Messiah was the word. From group to group, it swept till everybody in the crowd was looking at John with a great hope in his heart. Perhaps this mighty preacher who could so move hearts that even Pharisees and Sadducees humbly asked for baptism might be the very one for whom all Israel had been waiting so long. So the Pharisees and the Sadduce Sadducees were leaders Back in the times of the Bible, they were uh, leaders in the Jewish synagogues. And some, uh, they were supposed to know the Bible really well and answer all these difficult questions. But they kind of didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. So let's see what happens. Then somebody told John, 
that he was shocked. He said, no, 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 he cried. I am not the Christ. I am only his messenger sent to prepare the way before him. Are you Elijah then? Someone asked. No, not Elijah, said John. Then who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. If you are not the Christ or Elijah, asked a Pharisee, why are you baptizing people? Do you know what it means to be baptized? Have you ever gone to a church and you've seen, if, if you haven't seen it, it looks kind of like a big bathtub sometimes, but that's where you get baptized. So if you ask Jesus to come into your heart and then you want to be baptized, you need to talk to somebody in your church. That is a way to identify that you have become a child of the King and you want everybody to know. So John, he said, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. So what he's saying is, I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes or untie his shoes. What does he mean? The people must have asked. Is the Messiah already among us? Is he somewhere in this crowd? They began to look around, but they couldn't see anybody who looked like the Messiah they expected. Surely John must be mistaken, they thought. There was nobody here whose shoes he wasn't worthy to untie. It was all very strange. They wished John wouldn't be so mysterious sometimes. While everybody was talking and wondering what John meant, a young Gal Galilean, about 30 years of age, began moving closer to the riverbank. Nobody took any special notice of him. He was just one of the crowd going to be baptized. Suddenly, John looked up. As he caught sight of, who do you think it was? He got so excited. He caught sight of Jesus. A strange look came upon his face. And all the hundreds of people who had come to him for baptism, he had never seen anyone like this. Purity, goodness, nobility shone from his clear face and con or his clear eyes and his kind face. There was something strangely godlike about him. Surely this must be the Messiah. As Jesus asked for baptism, John refused. Oh no, he said. You should baptize me. But Jesus insisted. Let it be so, he said. He wanted to fulfill all righteousness. He had no sins to be washed away, but wished to be set a perfect example before all who should follow him. Had he not been baptized, others would have had an excuse for saying that they shouldn't be baptized either. And Jesus knew that would not be good for them. John at last agreed. Gently he lowered Jesus into the Jordan River until the water covered him completely. Then, just as carefully as he put him under the water, he lifted him up again to his feet. At that very moment, something marvelous happened. The Bible says that as Jesus went up out of the water, lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And here's a picture of that. Oh, I long for the day that Jesus looks at me and says, Oh, my daughter, my sister, I am so pleased. How very, very wonderful. Amid all the jostling crowd, his father had recognized him, Jesus, and called him my son. From all his mother had told him, and from all his study of the scriptures, he had believed he must be the son of God sent to be the savior of the world now he was doubly sure beyond all possibility of doubt all heaven had been waiting and watching for this moment for now it was that the precious babe of bethlehem the noble youth of nazareth became messiah the prince the anointed one anointed by the holy spirit of god and it happened at the exact time foretold by Gabriel to Daniel long years before.
It's called prophecy. Jesus being baptized was fulfilling prophecy. Now, after 30 years of preparation of study, work, and worship, Jesus was ready to begin his ministry of love that had been planned for him from the foundation of the world. How beautiful it was that on this very day his father should say to him, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Just to know that his father loved him and was pleased with him must have meant more to Jesus than we can ever imagine. You like your father to be pleased with you, don't you? How about your mother? Of course you do. So Jesus was made happy too. By his father's words of praise, new courage filled his heart. Now he could go on to meet anything that might happen to him in the days ahead. And here's a picture of that. Peeking around the book. So that's the end of this story. We're going to dive in a little bit next week about what Jesus' ministry looked like. Thank you for watching. Please, please, please know that we appreciate all the prayers and all the feedback that we're getting from these Bible readings. Again, tomorrow is Mother's Day. So for all you mothers out there, all you grandmothers out there, maybe you're a caretaker, or maybe somebody has been a part in your life that you have helped be a mother or a provider to them, I want to say thank you. Thank you for that little special something that you're doing each and every day to make children and, and people in the world know that they matter. You're a blessing to me. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Megan will be so proud. I think I remembered them all this time. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for being a part, just a little part of my evening. I'm Jill Walters. So thankful for each and every one of you. Have a great, great night. Hope to see you tomorrow night. Don't forget me. Bye, guys. Take care.